Hey guys, welcome to another Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Today I have for you a very, very interesting Gilgamesh and Friends dot deck. Uh, this is a deck that Square Enix, um, they had a three week long staff tournament that they hosted internally. Um, and this was the winning list. I, ended, I did take a little liberty in changing a few cards. Uh, and you'll see that I'm technically short of Gilgamesh, so one of those is technically a proxy, but it does still work. Um, and I, I cut the number of backups because we really want to focus on the consistency of Strongest Sword Gilgamesh. And really, if you think about it, this deck is all about clearing the way uh, for your Zidane and Yuffie. And then you have this Gilgamesh that operates very much like a, like a budget light cloud in that he has Brave, so he can attack and then use his special to kill something. Um, and you'll see that he's an 8,000 power guy, and we have Mario, so he becomes 9k. And very suddenly, this becomes a very real card your opponent has to deal with. So you'll see that we are playing a lot of forwards to make sure that his ability works. But we'll talk about some other really interesting things that this deck does. So first, I'm going to talk about the forwards and go over some unique choices there. Uh, talk about the very few summons and then wrap it up with the backups. So let's get right into it. So first, we have a one-cost Yuffie. Uh, this is great, and this is one of the things I add just because we want to be able to have another Yuffie to discard to the three cost specials effect. Um, Blood Fest can just really help get some damage and clear some ways. But also because this is just a great card to see late game where your opponent might be playing their bigger threats, and this can very quickly close out the last couple points of damage. Up next, kind of our, you know, would be staple and kind of, again, one of the main characters of the deck because. Zidane cannot be targeted by summons or abilities, and that is in itself a very strong effect. Again, like Yuffie, he can be blocked by four costs or more. Obviously, baby Yuffie is uh, three or more. But he allows you to set up this deck in a way that you have Odin, you have Gilgamesh, you have other ways to remove your opponent's forwards, so you can say, oh, hey, this is the one guy that can block uh, Zidane this turn. Okay, that's neat. I'm going to kill it, and then Zidane's still going to be able to hit you. So it really forces your opponent to have multiple answers every single turn, or they're going to have to take uh, fear and knowing that they're going to be taking some damage. Moving into our three drops, we have a one of Morphing Time Gilgamesh. Uh, again, I can't stress enough, you want six Gilgamesh in the deck. And again, full disclosure, I just didn't have another of the starter Gilgamesh because I gave away my starters in the giveaway. Um, I didn't have access to another one. So for the sake of this video, I'm saying you can add one of these. Really. The main point of this deck, the way it's built, is for Strongest Sword, but obviously Divider is very, very strong. So you could really go a 3-3 split either way. Keep the Strongest Sword if you're using this deck, and then either use Divider or Morphing Time. Double Attack, First Strike, becomes a 14k. This card can just very quickly do some damage if your opponent is not ready for it. However, I will say, more and more I use this card and try to be cute with it. I get hurt by a Leviathan, and Odin. This card can really be a trap for a lot of decks, and if you have a very uh, removal-heavy based meta, and you're expecting like Brynhildr's and Odin's, Leviathan's, uh, anything like that, it's really not a good spot to be. So I am more and more leaning towards uh, playing the other Gilgamesh. For our next 3-drop, we have the 3-drop Yuffie, 3-drop 6k, cannot be blocked by 4 or more, and then Bloodlet lets you split up 6,000 damage any way you choose. Um, this also works very, very well with the strongest sword because it lets us deal up to 6,000 dam uh, sorry, 6,000 on top of the 3,000 the other one deals for 9,000 damage. Yes, you have to discard two specials and activate two specials in the same turn. I understand how limited it can be, but it is, it's one of those things that it might not come up every game, but one of those games that it does come up and you realize it is an extremely relevant play, it's going to make you feel better that you hopefully realize it can help swing the game in your favor. One of the cards that I had to keep in because we just needed to talk about it and I had to not give it enough credit after first looking at the list is Hope. When it is a field, choose one backup and you get to activate it. Wind has a lot of these cards that say, you know, reduce the cost of them in some way and the fact that they let you recover a backup. Now he has another effect, but we're not um, playing Alexander the Summon, so it's not that relevant. But really the way that you need to think about this card is because we're playing Maria, which is give all your forwards plus a thousand power, this is really a two drop eight thousand power guy. Now, again, we've mentioned a lot of videos that kind of the eight and nine K is really the sweet spot where you want to be. So very quickly, you know, you think about two drops, you think, okay, Seraphie at a six thousand, that's kind of a, that's the higher end of the curve. And very suddenly we're able to skip up a couple steps 
that can really make the resource war in your favor. It can really help you get some efficient blocks in. And then you'll see that we're also playing the backup duo, so we get to search them out of the deck for free, help thin the deck, free resources, all that stuff feels great. Now we're gonna move into our four drops and talk about even more resource. Onion Knight, again, it's an 8K. With Maria, it becomes 9K. Sweet, sweet spot to be in. When it enters the field, choose one backup you control and activate it. Again, we wanna be doing multiple things where this is really a three drop 9K. That is great for helping accelerate our game plan. It lets us do cute things like Aerith or double up on Red Mage's effect. Um, it, it just does a lot of stuff and offers a lot of utility. Um, this is definitely a card I could see as a three of, but ultimately just didn't have room. And I want to really keep this as close as, uh, to Square Enix's list as possible. Up next we have Gilgamesh, which again, this could very easily be a four of. I didn't have another one. I'm sorry. I didn't want to proxy for the video. Add this one or Mighty Morphing Time, whichever way you want to split on them, absolutely go this way, is the Divider Gilgamesh. Now, his effect is only relevant when you have four or more damage, so yes, that's something to consider. There are going to be some games where you just happen to be magically in Christmas land and way ahead on damage and his effect's never relevant. But what's interesting to note uh, is that he cannot be returned to your hand by your opponent's summons or ability. So no Leviathan, no five cost Yuna. It's, it's a guy that they have to answer on field and get rid of another way. And you can buff it up. So this is really a great card for like late game control when they're just trying to stick an answer on the board and you're like, okay, well, no, I have all these Gilgamesh and Sage to get back even more Gilgamesh, so I'm just gonna freely kill whatever you play. It can really help you close out the game. And then the guy that, you know, I just wrote off and I'm it's still not 100% consistent, but hey, it clearly worked out for them, so I think I have to give them a shout out, is Strongest Sword Gilgamesh. Again, this is really just like Light Cloud that we have to think about it. Again, it's obviously not as good because it's only a common, but it's a four drop 8K with Brave, which that's a pretty good, that's a solid spot to be in. But then it has Strongest Sword. You get to choose a forward and you get to remove the top card of your deck from the game. So it's it's definitely a random element. Again, you want to filter your deck where, you know, we are playing 28 forwards in this deck. 28? I believe it's 28 off the top of my head. I'll have to double check in the description below for the list. Um, so, you know, more than, more than half the time it's going to hit. And then even at worst, you know, you're still going to be able to do 3,000 damage or something. Obviously, you want to break whatever you're trying to kill. That's the whole point of the effect. But sometimes doing that 3,000 damage um, and then comboing with some other things that your deck does can absolutely help you get in that little extra push of damage that you need. So again, the 3,000 damage isn't really going to kill anything on its own, but it does work very nicely with some of the other cards in the deck or just some very interesting combat uh, situations. Up next, which I thought was a really interesting card uh, to include, was 4-drop Ramza. Uh, for each backup you control, she gets plus 1,000. So she's really a 4-drop 9K. Um, you know, knowing that you're going to be playing this a little bit later, you're going to have more backups into play, what have you. Um, and that can be a 4-drop 10K because, again, we're playing Rhea. And then has the effect of Shout until on the turn, gains more power, haste, and first strike. So again, you can. this is one of those things where um, it's totally on the turn, so you can use it defensively because first strike is just absurd. Uh, maybe they weren't expecting another attacker. They were thinking, hey, I only need to leave up one blocker. They only have one attacker and nothing gives them haste uh, because you weren't showing red mage. Rams that can come out of nowhere and just wreck them. Uh, it does have a couple of those unique opportunities like that. It can really help surprise some damage in. So definitely a great uh, costed card for what it, we are going to be doing in the deck. So I really can't complain there. The super interesting one was Bart's because we're not playing a mono win deck. So you're thinking like, whoa, whoa, what's this guy doing in here? But, you know, he was in here. He's an EX burst. He's a 9K for five, which is not terrible. Uh, when he enters the field, activate all win characters you control. Now, again, I just want to stress, whenever it says characters, it means forwards and backups. So if you can filter out your deck where you have just the one lightning forward or backup that you need for your forwards, and then you have the rest of them are wind, it, a well-timed uh, Bart's, can suddenly give you all these blockers, give you all these resources to do extra things with, you know, and we'll, and let's say we have Odin in our hand, yes, we'll have to discard a lightning card for the cost of Odin, but then it op opens up the opportunity to play an Odin where we might not have otherwise had the opportunity to and stay in the game. And again, it is a nice relevant body to have, so it does have that attribute going forward as well. So, being a 9k5 
drop is maybe not the most exciting thing, but when it combos with the deck, it can be absolutely amazing. Now, again, if you're playing more of a, a mono wind mill deck, then absolutely that's where this card's going to shine. Rounding out our uh, Fords, we have the Summoning, summoning Grabbing Lightning. Um, I love this Lightning. You guys know that. I think they very keen on it, obviously, as well, because they played three, which um, is certainly a little bit more expensive for this deck, but it grabs Odin's. You'll see that we're the only summons that we are playing are Odin, because they are literally that good. And again, her effect, Army of One, 9K, First Strike, Haste, removes something, grabs an Odin, kills another thing. This is really just a card that keeps on killing, and it is great for that effect. So again, I think three was a little much, but we want to use a special, so uh, you know it's kind of a minimum if you don't have any other uh, lightnings in the deck, and army of one is just insanely good. And then last but not least, we have a one of Sephiroth. Again, high cost of card, but we have Maria. So it becomes a 9k first strike blocker, which again, will 99 out of 100 times in this game, kill whatever they're attacking with. Now again, you can't block it, what have you, but that first strike and being at 9,000 damage is extremely relevant. If they don't have, you know, an Odin or something to kill him, or they have to do like double Brynhildr, like they have to do some really disgusting stuff to remove Sephiroth once you have Maria as well. So that is something that I absolutely love. If I'm playing a win deck and I have Maria, I am almost always, always finding a spot for Sephiroth because he's an insane defensive forward. So something to keep in mind. Going into our summons really quick. Three of four drop Odin, no surprise. Two, seven, four, less, break it. Absolutely amazing summon. We've certainly talked about this enough. And then lastly, Terra Pit, AKA seven drop Odin, EX burst, or just summoning it, choose a forward and break it. Again, the fact that it just absolutely can kill something is wonderful. The fact that it's an EX burst is insane and lightning can grab it. Literally all the possible value that you could ask for. Moving into our backups, we have a one of Black Mage. Um, they originally had 18 backups in the list, if I'm not mistaken, so I did take the liberty of changing a few and cutting down some numbers. Black Mage is something that I haven't been terribly, um, you know, enth enthralled with, but it does kind of work with Strongest Sword Gilgamesh in a way, but again, if, there, if you have a Minmu Heavy Meta, then that's obviously doing nothing for you. You do have to pay two Lightning resources uh, or two Crystal Points to, to get the effect, so... It is a little bit, there's a lot of work that you have to do for this card to get the payoff. So it's nice to have as kind of an insurance policy and can make your opponent double think what they're attacking with or they're sequencing. Um, but ultimately, I mean, haven't been blown away by the card by any means. Um, so that's why I think it's just fine as a one or a two of. Up next, because we need another two drop, Red Mage, uh, giving something haste, pretty self-explanatory. Being able to get surprise attackers out of nowhere is a great feeling when your opponent might not be expecting it. And again, if we're playing the win guys, we can very often find ways to activate our backup it backups and give another thing haste, like Onion Knight, give it haste into something else uh, for just insane value. This is the card that I want to add, Aerith. We are playing a deck that is very special heavy or special focused. And she also has this thing where she comes into play, recovers three other backups. So she's helping accelerate your resource plan. I think that she just does enough for the deck that it just had to be included. Again, protecting Lightning, protecting uh, Sephiroth, protecting Gilgamesh, like all these things are fairly important for the deck. So it just, to me, seemed like an absolute auto-include. Another card that um, I wanted to keep the same and it's just what they had is Nora. Uh, it searches for hope uh, and you know, sometimes that might be the only thing it does. But again, the way that we should be thinking this is it lets you get a card. So really this is a one drop uh, backup that has some other effect. Now again, you might not always be discarding the hope that you're getting, but if you already have the first hope and feel, those other two just kinda do nothing. So it's nice to get them out of the deck and, and it helps to pay the cost back uh, for this backup. So it's nice in that regard. And again, you'll see that this deck is very much focused on kind of speeding up your play, getting the more value out of your resources and doing some interesting stuff. A card I really haven't talked about enough um, or really considered enough in terms of what does this card do for Zidane and Yuffie? Uh, literally everything you want it to do. Uh, when it comes to the backup, choose one four to cost three or less and break it. So your opponent says, hey, I finally have this blocker that's gonna stop your attacks for a couple turns. You go, uh, that's cute, but we got Seymour, so now we're gonna destroy it. Or you have multiple ways to answer their forward so your guys can just keep swinging through for damage. So 
absolutely a wonderful card. Getting into our last backup, some Maria. I've talked about this the entire video. Giving plus 1,000 power is just so relevant. It is so good. Absolutely, if you're playing win, this is a two or a three of. I could absolutely see it being a three of because it is that good, um, but I've always been playing as a two of. And then lastly, we have Sage. Again, anytime you're playing a special heavy deck, or, I mean, if you're playing Lightning in general, like, I, I keep going back and forth, and I, I think everyone is understanding now where I'm coming from, but, I mean, this card is just absolutely play a three of. With how good specials, specials are, with how good it can be, early game and late game, I mean, there's just no reason not to play three. So I've absolutely been in love with Sage, and it's one of the main reasons why I keep coming back to Lightning. So yeah, there you have it, guys. There is the Gilgamesh Unblockable Spam All the Fords kind of brew. I hope you liked it. Again, I will be having a link in the uh, comments below in the pinned post. I'll have a link of this, to, uh, or the comments in the description, I'll have a list of the deck. Sorry, it's late. I'm trying to get this video out. Whew. Um, but yeah, this deck, I am actually looking forward to playing it on camera. Uh, Matt has been, the other Matt has been working a lot of overtime, so we haven't got the chance to record a video, but I promise you guys, we have tons of more dual series videos coming up. I have like three or four brewers to play on camera, so you better believe that I'm getting excited to be playing all the games. So again, if you guys like our videos, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with your friends, get the word out there, all of that helps us out a lot and we sincerely appreciate it. So please share this video with your friends, tag your friend who loves Zidane, pass it along. We are very excited and would love to keep doing Final Fantasy content. We just wanna see the game grow as much as it can over the next you know, years, years and years to come. So thank you very much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section below what you would change and we will catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one.